Hi, I am Oscar Horta, although you'll read my name as Horta if you pronounce it in English. I am one of the co-founders of Animal Ethics, which is an animal organization that focuses on challenging speciesism and addressing wild animal suffering and has a long-termist approach. And in addition, I am an associate professor in philosophy at the University of Santiago de Compostela. And the way I ended up doing these things is a long story. Uh, I've been involved in animal advocacy for almost two decades since I was a teenager. Um, and uh, I first decided to study economy at that time because I thought it would be useful to understand how the world works in order to change it. But then I happened to read uh, Peter Singer's Animal Liberation and that changed my mind. And that's why uh, I ended up studying philosophy instead. Um, because I thought, well, if this guy is a philosopher and, and has been successful in, in, you know, changing other people's mind, maybe even if I'm not as, as, as uh, successful, I can still do my part. So I didn't have any information about uh, uh, how to maximize the impact of my career back then. I mean, there was no internet. It was the, the 90s. I just thought that maybe as a philosopher, I could become a professor or, or that anyway, uh, even if I ended up doing something else, uh, this training could be useful in, in making me a better, a better activist, a better advocate. And um, eventually I ended up building a career in academia, though it took me uh, longer than it should have, basically because, you know, I didn't have any money, so I had to work for a living in low paid jobs. Uh, as a temporary working or uh, harvesting fruit, as a street weeper in Islington in London and yeah, in many other ways. Um, but eventually what I found out is that um, even though I have this advantage, this disadvantage, sorry, of not having started uh, younger, uh, I nevertheless can spend a lot of time doing research in issues that I believe are important when I, uh, as I work in academia. And also I have the opportunity of reaching young generations of students and be influential among those who want to, you know, um, invest their time in, in improving the world. And also as an academic, you have certain prestige in society that can uh, be useful in order to have a, a higher impact. Now, as for what advice I could uh, give uh, to to you, well, I'm, I'm not sure I can I can give any anything uh, of particular interest here, but maybe I can say a couple of things, especially uh, targeting those who, like me, don't come from very rich countries or from the um, from the English speaking world. So I would encourage you all to think big, to not be intimidated, and to dream big. I ended up being a, a professor and I ended up working, uh, actually creating an international animal organization um, just because at some point I imagined that I could do it and I, and I thought I could do it. And I never ended up, for instance, working in, a, in an internationally recognized university, uh, in a university uh, uh, in a rich country, for instance, because I, I, I couldn't imagine that I could have uh, done it. And this is a limitation that those who are born in, in rich countries uh, don't have. So I would encourage uh, all of you who are not in this situation to not have this limitation and to try to think big because um, you really are able probably to, to attain much more than you think. So I guess this is all I, I have to say. Uh, I have speaking for I have been speaking for longer than I thought I would, which is odd because yeah, I, I thought that my message would be much shorter. But yeah, I hope this can be useful for one or two people and I also hope that the summit is useful to you all. So see you there and thanks for your attention. Hello, my name is Solus Shimtikas and I work as a researcher for an EA organization called Rethink Priorities. And my job is basically to write texts that would help animal advocates and animal advocacy funders to make better decisions that would help more animals. Now, this is a relatively small field. I think there are maybe 35 people in the world, very approximately 
that do a job that is comparable to mine and actually many of them do jobs that are quite different from mine. Uh, nevertheless, uh, how does my job look like? Well, any project begins with first trying to find a good topic. Uh, so, well, when you are a junior, junior researcher, usually you're just being told what to do. Uh, in general, topics either come either because some funder or some charity uh, asks you to do something that they think uh, would help their decisions or you just think that there is this, uh, for example, area that animal advocates don't know about and you think that writing about this topic could uh, change the direction of animal advocacy movement or unlock some new opportunities or so on. So when you choose a topic, uh, I think most of the work then is just Googling, at least uh, this is what I mostly do, uh, searching both academic articles and uh, just internet for information on the topic. And usually most of the information is not directly relevant, so you have to scroll through a lot of stuff. Uh, and then sometimes you find some sentence mentioning and passing something that is actually relevant for animal advocates. Uh, and then... Another way to get more information is reaching out to people and then talking to them. And also sometimes in my job, uh, I have to do some modeling, like uh, do a cost effectiveness estimate or uh, estimate how many animals of certain kind are used for what purpose uh, and similar. Uh, a very important part of the job is writing everything you found in a clear and uh, succinct way. And it's important throughout the process to always have an impact in mind. It's very easy to do a lot of research that actually won't change anyone's actions and won't help any animals. Now, if you think uh, that this sort of career could be for you, one, the first easy way to test this is just to read uh, articles written by organizations like the one listed, the ones listed here. Uh, see if you can imagine yourself writing such articles and I think one good sign is if you notice flaws in these articles or something that you would do differently um, and you think that would be better uh, it's also you can ask yourself do you think you are a good writer and do you think you have this kind of a curiosity and um, uh, mind that that uh, and is suitable for this job. Uh, and then a good way to test if you want to be a, a researcher and you're a good fit for it is to try doing some research, try writing some article and then maybe posting it on a forum or something. Uh, the problem is that, that it's difficult to find good topics without knowing the field of animal advocacy really well. Uh, Maybe I can try to help you with that a little bit if you reach out to me, although I cannot promise uh, anything. Um, a good way to get to know more about the field of animal advocacy is to go to uh, animal advocacy conferences and also make contacts there. Contacts are a good way to, to get into a field. Uh, I list animal advocacy conferences at an article called effective animal advocacy resources so you can uh, check the con check out the conferences there and another good way uh, is to volunteer for animal advocacy organizations and then um, yeah if you know better how uh, everything works you are you it would make you a better researcher or just better uh, you are making steps into working in animal advocacy if that's what is what you want um, although you can have a lot of impact without working uh, and getting paid for it necessarily now you may be thinking what kind of background is most helpful to do the kind of job that i am doing and it's really varied uh, we really need all kinds of people doing different sort of stuff so for example at rethink priorities we have uh, people uh, who studied philosophy, which is good for looking into 
animal sentience questions ecology which is good for looking into wild animal welfare questions uh, economy uh, yeah so they studied all kinds of things and it can all be useful in different ways uh, I myself, I don't have any formal background that is directly relevant. I studied mathematics, which would be actually really useful for me to know now, but I just was a bad student and I didn't really learn that much. I then learned to give as a programmer for five years, which is not at all relevant. But during those five years, I, I discovered EA and I engaged with it a lot and um, read a lot, Was was curious really thought a lot about where to donate money. And I think uh, this thinking is what made me, I hope, qualified to do the job uh, that I do now. So yeah, if you have any questions about this, if this is the kind of job that you're interested in doing, feel very free to reach out to me, either by whatever app this conference uh, will be using or, or this link, uh, Calendly, or via email. And yeah, thank you very much for listening, and good luck with your careers.